What's the word, y'all? All right, man, this weekend in the NBA was very interesting. There was no super overbearing storylines, but there are a lot of different stuff that I want to hit on. Zion, another setback. The Bulls had healthy safety protocol throughout the entire organization. Ten players on the team. Stacey King, who's doing play-by-play. -play. Everybody in the NBA hasn't done anything. We got to talk about that. Then we have, like, crazy performances from Kevin Durant putting up 51. And then LeBron putting on a huge backpack close to the age of 37 and leading the Lakers to a couple wins and a lot of things in between. Uh, so sit back, relax. Let's talk about some basketball leave a like let's get into it i want to make it very apparent that i am a fan of zion williamson i like watching him play if you talk to like old heads who don't like nba no more they start to mention different things like oh the foul baiting and the nba did what they could do to get rid of that and they talk about the lack of variety in the basketball because everybody just do nothing but shoot three shoot threes well zion is a dude that averaged 27 on dunks and layups literally so yeah, I, I enjoy watching his style of basketball. So this whole timeline has been kind of crazy. First of all, since Zion has been in the league, y'all been clowning, bro, because he got no drip. <laughs> and then there was pictures coming out of him shopping, buying jewelry and sneakers and stuff, and he was on the sideline, you know, better. I'm not saying I'm, I'm enjoying Zion. Zion is not an MVP candidate on league fit still, but he's better. Except for the anime outfit. Y'all remember the anime outfit? Either way, he was clown for that. And then this offseason comes around, right? And the Pelicans organization knew exactly what they were doing. They didn't announce that Zion broke his foot and had surgery on it until after they had their season tickets and everything. And then in that interview, if I'm not mistaken, at press conference, they were mentioning like three to four weeks Zion to be back, so don't even worry about it. And in that initial video, when we talked about it, we had uh, saw on Twitter of some sports doctors saying that, nah, that fracture foot is going to take more than that. And here we are. Two days ago, this is from Andrew Lopez. This is, uh, they had to dial back his rehab process from his injured right foot the bone hasn't healed the way they expected it so that three to four week injury at the beginning of the season that they mentioned has now gone to what we are what a third of the way through the season and he had another setback this is wild this week for zion has been really wild hey i just got a notification the nba has postponed the bulls pistons game on tuesday and the bulls raptors game on thursday we've got to go a week without bulls basketball which is great and we don't we're gonna get to that so i just went on to nba reddit Typed in Zion Williamson for the past week. And there are so many people talking about Zion, obviously. Three days ago, this is a day before they announced that his foot had a setback. Zion has now missed more games than he's played. Three days before that, Zion Williamson, 21, is rumored to be 330 pounds now. For some frame of reference, Shaq at 21 was 325. He's more than a half a foot taller than Zion. There's the pictures of him with the red jumpsuit. That went viral. But then there was a picture a day later of him at a jewelry shop that he didn't look that bad. So there's a lot of stuff going on with Zion as far as like how people are perceiving him and things like that. But things get worse because him having a setback isn't enough for me to come in and make a whole video about or be the, the first thing we talk about in the video. But it was something that came out a couple hours ago that was very, very crazy. Pelicans beat reporter says Zion was skipping rehab workouts and falling asleep during film sessions last week. Okay, now this comes from Jack Madison. He is a beat writer for the Pelicans. And when I see something like this, now personally, the only beat writers I keep up with are Chicago Bulls related because that's my favorite team. But even I know there are some beat writers slash reporters with the Bulls organization that are not credible people. So immediately when I see this, I see a person in the Pelicans organization, a journalist, I'm like, okay, how credible is this person? I talked to some Pelicans fans that I know. I went to, to the Pelicans subreddit and everything. This guy, for the most part, has not done anything to become a, a, a person that's not credible with what he's saying. So if this is true, if Zion is out there skipping rehab workouts, we have a bigger problem than just this man's foot. If him, him falling asleep doing film sessions is not that bad, listen... I, freshman year of high school, I fell asleep during the film session. So that ain't no, this ain't no big thing. He ain't hooping. I'm okay with that. Well, okay, I'm not okay with it, but I'm not gonna overreact to him falling asleep. There is a video from last year, if you follow me on Twitter, where he fell asleep during an NBA game where he was on the sidelines for. That's what 20,000 fans in attendance. So if it's just him and his teammates and the coaching staff, yeah, he probably falling asleep. The lights all dim because they got a projector. Yeah, I, I understand that. But it's the missing... The skipping the rehab workouts that is super, that's the biggest red flag imaginable. And y'all know I always try to put it on an even playing field, man. Try to make it more relatable. I've had shoulder surgeries, right? I even tore my right shoulder a couple months ago. I didn't have surgery on it, but I had to go to physical therapy. There have been times where I had opted not to go to physical therapy on the day. 
Oh snap, the, the Bulls are playing this night? Ah, oh, I had a therapy session at five. The Bulls start at seven. I would rather go to the Bulls. That has happened. But when you already had a couple different setbacks and you are the star player, the building block of a franchise, you cannot be doing this. And also in this report from the dude, he was basically um, implying that the people within the Pelicans organization are afraid to step up and, and, and make Zion mad or criticize Zion because they're afraid that something might happen. Because there were already rumors beforehand that Zion's camp wants him out of the Pelicans. Now, Zion never said it himself. Even in his, his interviews uh, coming into the season, he said, I only want to play here. I don't know if there was a PR thing, but whatever. He said that. But people in his camp were saying, hey, we don't want Zion here right now. And then even like on the biggest platform, some people that I desperately respect in the NBA world had topics on their different podcasts talking about, could Zion be the first rookie player to be offered the max contract, whatever it may be, to say, nah, I want to go into restrictive, I want to go into a free agency. That was real conversations. So they're afraid to tell Zion, get your, get, if you don't get to therapy right now, if you don't go to rehab right now, they just like, Zion, you do what you got to do. That's wild. You know, the Pelicans have, in, the, in themselves, have caught a lot of flack throughout this whole Zion process because people are like, man, they're letting him get to this point. If he is 330, they let him get to 330. Zion is just as at fault as the Pelicans organization. And we're seeing that right now. That is so wild to me. And now you got people turning on Zion, which is which is crazy, bro. You got people turning on Zion, saying that he got that $75 million from Jordan Brand. And since then, he ain't decided that he want to hoop no more. I know this is how things work, right? When, when people are at their, their lowest, this is not just in sports, this is in life in general. When people are at their lowest, people start to tack on to that. But Zion, for the most part, until this season, had been one of the most likable players in the NBA, right? He's dunking on you and he's smiling, getting back. In interviews, he's smiling and making jokes. But since we haven't seen him play, people that once enjoyed Zion are not enjoying Zion no more because of all this stuff that's going around with him. I'm not jumping off the bandwagon. I will say I'm not one of the foolish ones that said, ah, oh, he'll be all right. I'm not concerned about it because I am concerned. But I'm not saying that he can't get back to playing and averaging 27 points per game and being an all-star again. But I will say that I am concerned. All right, like I said earlier, we want to talk about the Bulls going into health and safety protocol, 10 players. Um, but again, Wolves just tweeted that they decided to postpone these games. And you know what? Even, even that, I want to address this because it, this is kind of wild. People think that because it's my team, that's why I'm speaking out about the NBA potentially postponing games. I said this last season when it was the 76ers going through it. They should not have been playing if they only had eight to nine players. Obviously, there have been breakouts there. There have been breakouts in Charlotte, and the NBA had to do, they, they were supposed to do what, what's right by those organizations and stop and play, even if it's just for two games, which it seems like it might be for the Bulls. Reschedule those down the line. That's not a problem. Boom, you see there's an obvious outbreak going on. You have to take control as, as the NBA. You just have to. And I don't, I'm not looking at this like, oh, Oh, the Bulls lost two games because DeMar DeRozan helps. I don't really care about that. I, I'm not really thinking about the Bulls seeding right now. I just want these players to get healthy and to prevent them from potentially um, spreading the virus. Now, the, Billy Donovan said that, you know, majority of the dudes that in the Bulls organization that are tested positive are asymptomatic, but that does not mean they can't still spread it to their opponents. Zach Levine just played a game against the Miami Heat, and a day later, up, oh, he's in protocol. He's been guarded by 100 people because he was the only person that was scoring. So, of course, he was getting double teamed. But you know what I'm saying? The NBA should have stepped in earlier. But, again, I tweeted better late than never. So, hopefully, the Bulls organization can stop this spread and get back to playing basketball next week because this was ridiculous. I think even Sh Charlotte deserved to postpone some games. Now, luckily, they had Kelly Oubre on the team, and he came off the bench and started to drop 30 pieces. So, they ain't been terrible when they had their star players down and even Terry Rozier just got cleared or even the 76ers a couple weeks ago or even last season the, the 76ers had it twice you know you, you just have to I don't know maybe I'm bugging but ha, today was the day for me um boost it up not not propaganda that some people think it is come on now I do want to talk about Brian uh because yesterday put up on a crazy performance where he was everywhere, man. Like I said, all the time, enjoy basketball, y'all. You might hate LeBron James, but you got to look at yesterday. And you know what? Yeah, the last two games have been against players that are that were born in the 2000s, for sure. 
But you got to get those wins. This is not a team that was getting those wins earlier. They had lost to OKC twice already this season. So LeBron stepping in and closing that out. And against Franz Wagner and company, he also did his thing, block his shots, playing defense and all of this. I hate that. I, I love that LeBron is doing this, but I hate for Lakers fans that this is the extent that you have to go to to be competitive. That LeBron has to turn into the MVP version of himself every single night. But I mean, as a view, the viewing experience, I'll take it. Uh, Shams had some reports to come out this morning about some some interesting things one of them being that Kyrie Irvin that they believe that Kyrie Irvin might be able to play basketball soon now if you didn't know Kyrie Irvin wouldn't be able to play home games but the um, Brooklyn Nets organization had decided man if you can't be here for half the games you'd rather you not be there at all and they told him he can't practice with us he can't play with us but they said that the window has opened they didn't say that they believe that Kyrie Irvin will be able to play home games which means that they don't believe that he'll get the he'll get the uh, vaccine but they opened the door for him potentially to play role games and stuff, which is interesting. I wonder what happened with any organization where they were like, you know what, if, if just half the games are better than none, none of the games. Because right now they are sitting as the number one team in the conference. Again, KD just dropped 50 the other night against uh, Motor Caden. And they've been all right. I wonder what happened, what internal dialogue that they have They was like, Kyrie should be able to come play with us now. And this is all from Shams. We're not going to spend too much time on this because I still think that a lot of the stuff has to develop. But it says on the Ben Simmons news, the Knicks, Lakers, Wolves, Blazers, Kings, Pacers, and Cavs. That is seven teams right there that are interested in Ben Simmons. But it also says that Daryl Morey and them are still looking for an all-star caliber player and multiple first-round picks. So we'll see if they end up getting that package. The Atlanta Hawks are going to extend some people, but they're listening to offers for Cam Reddish. I don't know what they'd be looking to get in return, but that's very interesting. He's averaging 11 points per game, a 37% three-point shooting. Dennis Schroeder. Teams are calling about Dennis Schroeder. They're open to potentially move Dennis Schroeder, the Boston Celtics. The Cavs are looking to be buyers. Mm, I love that for them. I love that for them. Go ahead. Trade Colin Sexton. He can't hoop no more this season anyway. Go ahead and try to snag one of the top four seeds or stay out of the play-in. I, I, I like that for them. They're looking at Darius Garland, who could potentially get a five-year, $181.2 million extension. It's a ton of money. Jesus Christ. DeMont Sabonis has generated a bunch of interest, which we expect. He's a two-time All-Star, 25 years old, on a good contract with three years left. Of course, there's going to be teams interested. And they mentioned the Suns and the Kings. They showed interest in previous years. Now, the Kings, I mean, not the Kings, but the Suns, since then, have went on a championship run. So I don't think that the Suns are out there trying to make a huge splash, but they could. Could they? Uh, what do they have? What do they have to give up? Dario Sarge, Jalen Smith in a pick? That's not good enough. <laughs> That's not good enough. Um, So I don't think the Suns are going to be the buyers for DeMontis Sabonis, but the Kings, I think the Kings could be. The, the, the Knicks says some teams are calling about Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox had a big old game for them the other night, and teams are like, you know what? Sure, let's, let's take a stab at it. If I am a rebuilding team, like Detroit, who else is down here? Detroit, Orlando, Thunder, Rockets, sure. Why not take a chance on, on Kevin Knox if it don't cost anything or much? And then the Spurs are looking to trade ben, Brent Forbes again. He came back to y'all, and y'all trying to dump him off 30 games into the season. That's crazy. All right, that's that's all I really have for y'all, man. All right, so let me know in the comment section what you think about all of the things, Zion's situation, all these trade rumors, all of that, because things are about to get crazy. You know what I'm saying? The trade market opens in exactly two days, basically. The, the 15th is when 83% of the league can't get traded. I'm just saying, we might see some, we might see a blockbuster or two. So let me know in the comment section. Hopefully, I'll be back tomorrow. They say that you might get some side effects in the 24 hours after getting a booster. So if I'm not up to speed, then I won't film. But if I am, expect to see you tomorrow, man. I appreciate y'all. Enjoy basketball.